We also know that volcanic eruptions are caused by built up pressure of molten magma from under the Earth's crust, and the oozing fire like substance that comes out of volcanoes comes from that magma. So it's not some god trying to communicate with us. This is how we know the god Yahweh of the Bible is not real. See, the character Yahweh is just a volcano god. A lot of people don't realize that because they haven't read the necessary books in the Bible. And often when people do read those books, they aren't looking for the damning evidence that shows this to be the case. Even skeptics commonly refer to Yahweh as a sky god, sky daddy, or invisible man in the sky. Sure, the character is in the sky sometimes, like when he's in the form of smoke, and his mountain reaches into the sky. But let's look at some Bible verses. In Exodus chapter 3 verse 1, Mount Sinai is referred to as the mountain of God. And in verse 5, Moses is commanded to remove his shoes while standing on this holy mountain ground. So finally, in chapter 15 verse 17, it is established that the reason Sinai is called the mountain of God is because it is the place of his dwelling, which he built with his own hands. In other words, Yahweh lived in Mount Sinai. That's right, Yahweh is just a magic man that lives in a mountain, who apparently has a short temper, as we see early on in Leviticus chapter 10, when he lays waste to two individuals for failing to appropriately follow his instructions on how to build a fire. It's no wonder that he was seen as such a quick to anger God, when you realize that combined with Mount Sinai, Yahweh is a volcano God. And, as we find in Exodus 19.18, when they arrive at the mountain, it is smoking and shaking, and God appears on this mountain in the form of fire descending upon it.
Of course, Mount Sinai is not an active volcano and probably never was. There is evidence of ancient lava flows in the area, but nothing that necessarily concretely links it to Mount Sinai. That's alright though, since this story of an intercessor climbing a mountain and receiving laws from God is an old one that has been handed down anyway. Around 1700 BC, Babylonian King Hammurabi wrote some laws quite similar to the ones given to Moses by Yahweh. They included concepts like eye for an eye, and regulations regarding obligations, professions, and rights including commerce, slavery, marriage, theft, and debts. One need only read the book of Exodus to see the parallels to the Mosaic laws. And according to legend, King Hammurabi climbed a mountain to receive these laws from the sun god. Stories like these were passed along by word of mouth before they ever made it onto papyrus. So, through oral tradition, it was inevitable that these stories would gradually become slightly distorted. And of course, any priests or editors who were writing these stories down probably added some of their own thoughts or opinions. Hence all the orders for priests to be allowed large portions of offerings brought to the Lord. You know, gifts, peace offerings, sin offerings, guilt offerings, or the good old burnt offerings that bring a pleasing aroma to the Lord. And of course, translators have fairly often likely altered the text to comply with their moral standards.